So this is the paint color sampler, the mixing sampler, and it's an exercise. And when I put out my paint, I like to have the colors right next to it because I have a lot of colors and um, I want to make sure I know which ones I'm using. So I'll put some paints out. And when you put your paint out, um, don't squeeze the whole thing. Just kind of like basically dab it. Um, colors like um, phthalo blue and phthalo green are really, really strong. So they um, go a really long way. And I'm going to put some um, burnt sienna out as well. Okay. So the one, first one is mixing paints on wet paper. And, whoa, here I'm at bubbles. That's the end. So mixing paints on wet paper. And here are some examples of mixing paint on wet paper. Actually, that's dry on top of dried paint. That one comes later. And so what, what it is, it's um, wet your paper. And you can wet your paper any way you want to. You can um, wet it with a paint brush, or you can wet it with a squirt bottle, and um, any way you do it works fine. And so when you put paint on wet paper, it kind of likes to travel and move. Okay, that's mixed paint on wet paper, and we're going to pull that one aside and put its check mark on that. And then we have layered wet paint on top of dried paint. And you might want to mute your microphone because I oh, can sorry. hear you. That's okay. So layered paint on top of dry paint. So here's some watercolors examples of dry paint underneath that I put wet paint on top of. And here's one that I did this morning and worked pretty good. So um, I'm going to, since I don't have any dry paint on here, I'm just going to go ahead and put some more paint on top of this one. So it, because... When acrylics dry, they are completely inert. You cannot mess up the underneath stuff here. I'll just use plain water. You can't mess that up. With watercolors, you can actually come back and mess it up. Can you see that melting? So you can, um, with watercolors, you can come back and, and take it away. But this is um, wet paint on top of dried paint. And we've got that one done. And so next comes stroke. And stroke is as many marks as you can make with different paintbrushes. So I do like to have a couple different paintbrushes. Um, this one was a whole bunch of different paintbrushes. We had, uh, I believe that was a fan brush and a big wide flat brush. Um, this was my brand new... Um, cool paintbrush that I got that cost way too much money um, and stroke is basically that it's like what kind of marks can I make with different paintbrushes so that's stroke and then after stroke we have compound stroke which I think is a really dumb one um, compound means to and compound is two different directions for your mark. So you're going two different ways. And I, I don't know what you can use it for. Maybe, um, maybe making little birdies or something. Um, but I tried to kind of put that down. So the next one is stamping. And stamping is... If you have like an $80 paintbrush, I wouldn't use it. Stamping is a... Kind of try to wreck your paintbrushes move. And you can make some really nice marks with it. Um, I really like it. So that's stamping. And then we have another one, dumb one. I think that um, we have tip and heel. So here's tip and heel. And tip and heel is a slow, methodical stamp. So with tip and heel, you're going the tip and the heel. And the tip and the heel. And if I had paint all through this, it would probably look different. So with this brush, it's going to look a little bit different. And I can even do it sideways. So it's a, a textural thing, and it's also motion with the brush. So that is tip and heel. And then we go on to wet brush and dry brush. 
whoops, here we go, wet brush and dry brush. So, with wet brush, ah, it is, here's my wet one, here's the wet brush, this one's a wet brush, and then we get into dry brush. So wet brush is basically, your brush is going to be full of paint and lots of water, and it's going to be like that, and then eventually it will run out and start making that mark right there, which is the dry brush mark. So wet brush to dry brush. Um, those are all wet. This is wet to dry. This one is wet and then eventually dry. And this one's all dry brush. So you're going to have a different, completely different texture with that one. So we got wet brush and dry brush. And then we go on to positive and negative shape. So here I have a negative shape field and a positive shape field. And this is, um, this is a negative, this is a positive, and here's the kitty cat from earlier. Um, I didn't pull off all of his um, tape yet. So if I pulled off all the tape, you would see white eyes too. Um, negative, positive. And same thing, cut out something with tape or, or um, I've had people go out in their yard and, and get sponges. So we'll have a red cat this time. And then we'll have the exoskeleton of a red cat in the negative. So when these dry, they'll be basically exactly like that. They'll be wet and dry cats. Wet, wet and dry cats or blue and red cats. So that's um, positive and negative field. And then we go on to the washes. Now the washes are really tricky and quite annoying. So I'm going to move this over so that they stay. So a flat wash is supposedly an even layer of paint with no streaks. I can see a little bit of streaks in this one, so this one's not very good. This one's pretty good, actually. This one's pretty good, except for I touched it with my finger in the middle, and that one's all right. So when you're making a um, wash, you don't want to stick your paintbrush into the paint. You actually want to kind of homogenize your paint and have it fairly soupy. Because if you... Um, put your paintbrush in the paint and you're going to have um, an area of really concentrated paint and um, unconcentrated paint. So with a flat wash, you want to basically just keep going. And I have a little bit of bubbles in this. I must have had some soap in my water. Um, so basically like that. And good watercolor painters say that you're not supposed to go over it again. But um, yeah. Anyway, so that one's not very good because it's got a little bubbles in it. And can I'm not sure if you can see this. There feels like a little bit of a glare on my um, paper, but we'll see. So that's a flat wash. And then we move to a graded wash, which I think I would grade my flat wash uh, probably a C minus. So then we go to graded wash. And with the graded wash, it's basically getting lighter as it goes down. So what I'm doing with that is I'm adding water to it to dilute it down. And again, you want to try not to have streaks. Um, I don't think that um, I'm doing a great job. So one way of doing this is what I call the cheating way is to get paint on here. And then let it sit for a little while. And then wiping it off. And that kind of wiped it all off. Let's try that one again. Let's go ahead and use a different color. And we'll just leave it like that. So that's a graded wash. And that works okay. I still think it's about a C minus, but that's all right. Okay. Wet and wet wash is you have one color at one end and you do it graded down to the end and then you have another color going the opposite direction. And these are all examples 
of, of graded washes. So let's try one. And how did I do my big paintbrush? There we go. So let's try some green. And again, I want to homogenize that. And let's go ahead and put some paint on here. And then kind of let it, let it, let it peter out. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush a little. And we'll, we'll have a schmaltzy sunset with red coming up from the bottom. Ooh, not hom homogenized. And then have it bleed out into that one. Okay. That's a wet and wet wash. And this one's really pretty. This one's not bad. This one's not very good. But, okay. So after the washes. Oh, there's one more wash that I don't have on the sheet, but might be a really good one to have. So we had, um, we have this one and this one and this one. And now I want to do a granular wash. And granular wash, I think, is really pretty. So granular wash, um... When the paint falls out of solution, it gives us this super grainy, um, I think it's really pretty. Um, here's another example of a granular wash that I spilled things on this morning. Um, and then here's another example of granular wash. So with granular wash, there's certain colors that are really heavy and they fall out of solution um, when they're um, in water. And one of the colors is burnt sienna. And burnt sienna um, um, will fall out of solution. You can probably see it just kind of like turning to, to like this almost a sandy resin. Um, one of the other colors is ultramarine blue. And ultramarine blue will do the same thing. It kind of gr gets grainy and falls out of solution. And you can do this with um, like a really nice sunset or something like that or, or um, something. And, and there falls out of solution. You can see it as, as time goes on, it gets grainier and grainier and grainier. And it's pretty cool. So that one's not on the list, but I would um, recommend you um, trying that one. And let's go on to the next page, which is masking using blocking, um, masking tape to block out areas. So what the masking tape does is it blocks out areas um, and leaves where the masking tape was white. Um, here's some examples of uh, masking tape. And you can also use it for like fruits or vegetables and, and have a really nice, e nice edge. Um, this one I did earlier and I just moved my, um, my masking tape. So now I'm going to have like a double, which is kind of cool. Um, and when I pull this off, it's going to be white underneath or, or um, the color that was under there. So let's try it with um, just plain tape with nothing else on it. And since I'm putting it on fairly thin, I believe I can pull it off right away. So let's go ahead and pull some of this off. If you um, don't let it dry completely or if you're, it's fairly thick, when you pull the tape off, it will bleed under it. So um, well, that was pretty cool. And I have all this, whoop, now that was fake, I thought it was tape. Now they faked me out. Head fake on tape. And so masking can be really cool, and it's also, I like the idea of, of double, double layers for it. Um, I didn't put any paint there, um, but I can, because I know I put some more masking tape there. And so we can pull that off. Cool. Okay, so that's masking tape, and I'll go ahead and start pulling this off and leave some of it lid on. Yay! So that's masking tape to block out areas. Um, next one is wax paper. And wax paper is very, very temperamental, and because a lot of people don't use wax paper anymore, I hope it comes back because it's much, much better for the fish and, and the environment than um, plastic, but um, a lot of people don't have wax paper. So you can use a crayon or you can use um, a candle. So this one was done with wax paper and I think it's really pretty. So the wax paper is very, very delicate. 
Um, and actually this morning's one, very little of the wax paper worked. So here's the wax paper ones. And let's try some wax paper first. And so I'm going to draw on it with wax paper, on the wax paper, on top of my paper. And I turn it over because one side of the wax paper is more wax than the other, and I don't know which one. So if I just do it with wax paper, let's see what happens. When you put paint on it, don't put real thick paint on it. You want it really thin, and you want to put it on really delicately. So I'm not putting much pressure on if you do put more pressure on, it will kind of like make the tape disappear. So let's try it with a candle, and I'll put it down here. It only really works on um, dry paper, so I won't go over the wet part. This is a, a Easter Easter crayon for um, putting resist on Easter eggs, and I'll try that with a different color. Maybe we'll try blue. And so that's a little bit more um, different texture, but... That's a good example of the wax paper crayon and candle. So, let's see. Next one is an incise line. Get rid of the wax paper. So, an incise line, use a sharp object to incise. Um, and so, what you're doing is you're basically putting a, um, a V or a channel in your paper that the paint will accumulate more in. So here we go. I have this funky, um, here's another one. I have this funky kind of like tool that is not very clean. And I'm putting a, basically a gouge into my paper. And when I come back with paint, it's going to be darker where I put the gouge. And so it's kind of a, I don't know, different way for different things to um, make a mark. But I, I like the um, inside line. Next comes salt. So we've got this one done and this one done. And then we're going to go on to salt. And I think salt is fantastic. So um, here's some salt. And when it's done, when it's dry, you want to knock all the salt off. Here's one that I did a while ago that has really, really beautiful salty textures. Um, with this one, I'm going to... So um, with salt, you don't want the paint close to drying. You want it really wet with lots of water. Because if there's no water on there, then there's nothing for the salt to absorb. And so I can put this on. And if you um, had snow recently or, or if you um, have snow from two years ago, um, you can use rock salt, and that really absorbs a lot of it. So that salt, it's basically sucking up the, um, the water, and it will leave these cool little marks here. Um, don't put your paint on really thin because if, or, or dry, because if it's too dry, when you put salt on it, it will just basically stick to the paint and won't make any texture because there's not enough moisture to um, dry it. Okay. So I'm looking at my um, water in my um, water container, and I'm starting not to be able to see through this. So um, I can either go dump this in the other room or I have a clean side over there. So once you can't see through your water, you want to change it and um, get some clean water because the water will only be as clean as um, the water or, or you won't get as white. Okay, so let's moving on. Blotting using paper towels. So here's some examples of blotting with paper towels. I did that one earlier today. Here's, uh, this one was um, blotting using a paper towel, and it looks like um, little, like, fishies almost. I kind of like the fishies. Here's one that I, I did a little painting, uh, blotting using paper towels, and used the paper towel texture for um, making these pairs. So, exactly like it says, you can use a paper towel to apply paint, or you can put paint on here, and I don't have any red left, so I'm going to throw some more red on here. And there's my big paintbrush. There it is. 
I want to put some paint on here. And then I can use a paper towel to pull it off. So there's a lot of different ways to make that texture. I think um, this was really finely done. This was uh, pretty cool. It looks like she um, folded her um, paper towel into that of a fish and did it. So blotting using paper towels, um, applying it, and removing it both. Okay, then we move on to puddling, which is one of my favorites. So puddling is using lots of water. So here's, here's the example from earlier today. Here's the puddling that we did together. And then um, here is some other puddling examples. I think they're really beautiful. I love that as the puddle dries, it kind of um, creates an edge and it changes as it goes. Um, so on this puddling, I got myself a um, new new thing to puddle on. Um, this has about five layers of, of um, tape on either side so I can have a pretty good sized swimming pool. And one way to start with puddling is you can um, start with um, some water already on, so a puddle, a water puddle already on there, and you can add paint to it. Ooh, that was a lot. Um, can you see the um, kind of like marbling that happens with it? That's pretty cool, and um, you can add more marbling. You can also um, cheat a little bit, or and you can make, um, you can kind of use inks for this one because they're very concentrated. And with inks and things like that, you can kind of drag it and make it into um, um, little like marbling-ish things. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to leave that one like that, put it somewhere without spilling it, and then I can show you on the next class after it's dry. So that's puddling. Here's the other examples of puddling. And once it dries, you can put puddles on top of puddles on top of puddles. And that works pretty good. That's pretty cool. So next one is splattering. And splattering is taking your paper and kind of removing everything that you don't want to get paint on it. And you can just splatter. You can also splatter with something like a toothbrush, which kind of has really nice little fine splatters except where it dripped off my my finger so um splattering is good the other thing with splattering is that you can put pieces of paper down and you can mask areas of splattering so that you can um add a different layer to it I'll have all yellow on this one ah big drips um, and then when you pull these up, you're going to have kind of like this. I did did a little bit more carefully. Um, okay, so that's splattering. And we'll come back to this thing again. And we'll see where we are. We did uh, puddling. We did splattering. And now we're going to do lifting. Next one is lifting by wiping. So here's some lifty things, and I'm going to clean up my palette a little bit more. And we're going to do, haha, I got some splatters on here. So here's lifting. So lifting, you can be really careful. Um, this is the one I did earlier. I was not careful with it, but let's, let's maybe be a little bit more careful this time. And we'll put some paint on here, and we'll lift it. And I just have a Q-tip, and I'm lifting it with the Q-tip. So if you noticed right here, I pushed kind of hard with it, and it dragged it and kind of messed up my paper a little bit. When I was over here on this side, I was lifting it really gently so it didn't have so much of that drag thing on it. Um, you can do lifting with anything. You can lift with your fingers. You can lift um, with your brush. Let's come back and, and lift some of Even that this is sort of dry, I can have some water in my brush, and I can be lifting this off as I go. So that's lifting. Um, 
you can use sponges, you can use um, um, cotton balls, you can use it wet or dry. I think that if you want to get more of this paint off, um, probably wet it a little bit. So that's lifting. And then we're going to blot using plastic wrap. So plastic wrap does, does it a little bit differently than the paper towel because plastic wrap is not very absorbent at all. So where's my plastic wrap? There it is. So again, with the um, plastic wrap, just like with the paper towels, you can have some paint already on here and you can see what happens when you touch it with the plastic wrap. You can also apply it with the plastic wrap. So it has a different texture. You can also fold this into um, different ways and you can see what that does. Um, again, um, let's put some more paint on here in some of the holes and see what happens if we if we pull it off like that. Okay, so that's blotting using uh, plastic wrap. And then my other, one of my other favorites is bubbles. So with bubbles, you want to have some soap. I use Dawn dish soap um, and bubbles. This is the one from earlier. I think it's really pretty. Um, and this one is on paper that isn't sized. When you si this one's on paper that is sized. When you size paper, it's a gesso that you're putting on the paper. Um, and the gesso um, makes it so that the paint cannot be absorbed into the paper. And this is it without it size. So you can kind of see that the paper sucked up some of the um, paint. And same thing with this one. The more layers of paint you have on here, the more, um, the more um, it won't sink into the paper. So let's go ahead and um, do some bubbles. So with bubbles, don't inhale. Make bubbles. I also add a little bit of glycerin to my, um, my, my dish soap and that makes the bubbles a lot more elastic so they can't be, um, can't be broken. And with the bubbles, you want to basically impregnate the bubbles with your paint. And like you see on this one, it can be many, many layers of paint. And if you do happen to have some ink at home, ink um, works really well, again, because it's super concentrated and you can um, basically throw it in there. So again, um, I'll show you this one on Wednesday, if you remind me, and see what it looks like when it's dry. Um, you can also move the bubbles so that they kind of have a wider um, base for the colors. Um, sometimes it doesn't come out as concentrated like that. You can also um, add different colors after those colors settle a little bit. You can try putting a different color on top, especially if you, um, if you try to move it, because moving it is going to... Um, make the bubbly thing in a different spot or have it bleed away. So that's bubbles and I believe that's the end of our list. So that was bubbles. Um, your own textures. So you can use anything for textures and I didn't show anybody this this morning but, but look, look at this really cool looking like bad hair day sponge. So this one is, I'll call it Bad Hair Day Sponge, and I'll put it on here. Um, maybe I'll use the other end. So, so just a sponge as a texture. Um, so that one's pretty good, and we can call that one Sponge. Um, and then let's try another one. I got this um, weird piece of cardboard, and this side is kind of um, wet because I had a bubble picture on it earlier. And so what happens if I use this? Ooh, wet, it doesn't really do that much until it starts getting dry. But it's got a pretty cool um, drying thing. So I'll, let me try the, the dry end of it. I'll just try dry, and I'll try it in a little bit of wet paint and see what happens. So that one's pretty cool, and this one's going to be called cardboard. Um, cardboard in pink and green. Um, so that's your own textures, and you can really use anything. 
Um, let's see. The last ones are your own paintings using some of the methods um, of applying and removing paint. So I'm going to show you a couple students' works that turned these in before. And basically just a chance to play. So here's um, three little pictures that they drew. Um, this one had the um, wax paper. Um, this one was uh, dry on top of wet. Same thing on that one, or wet on top of dry. Um, and this person's was um, just some little uh, more uh, splattering, a uh, mast splattering. Um, yeah, so that's it. And that's it for my movie.